Okay, so we're doing a new drawing here. We're, we're going to draw a roller bracket. So it's uh, exercise 6.6. .6. We're looking in a book uh, written by A.B. Boundy. It's called Engineering Drawing. It's the sixth edition, and it's on page 225 if you're looking for it. Okay, so like I said, it's a roller bracket. There's a description of what they would like you to do. Uh, we're going to do something, but probably not exactly that. Um, now, the drawing itself. We've got a number of parts on one drawing with all the dimensions we need to be able to reproduce uh, this particular product. Okay, up the top here, we've got uh, the upright bracket. It even calls it part number one, the bracket. Uh, it tells me it's made out of cast iron and there's two required to make it. Uh, what else we've got? Down here we've got part number two, the base. It's also made out of cast iron, one required, and it has only a front view and a top view. Um, back up here to the roller, the roller itself. Number three, cast iron again, one required. Um, you know that it's a cylindrical type of thing because it has this centre line through it. Um, and it also has this line of symmetry through the centre of it as well. Only has the one view with all of the dimensions jammed on it. This bracket over here, it's shown to us in three different views. So we have um, uh, a front view, uh, an underneath bottom view, and a right-hand view off to the right-hand side. Uh, I know that because this little symbol here tells me it's drawn in third angle projection. Third angle projection means that if this is my front view, that's what I see. If I turn it to the right, that's what I'm going to see over here. So the right-hand side, uh, that's where your right-hand view goes. Uh, what else have we got down here? Got a spindle, again, just the one view, all that's needed, center line, it's a cylindrical thing. The bush, again, center line, cylindrical thing, heaps of information. Uh, some extra information. Um, we're gonna need a few bolts to go into these threaded holes. And I'll talk more about that later. And also a, a six millimeter metric thread grease nipple. So we'll get onto that one later as well when we're doing the assembly. Okay, looking at this bracket. In my head, I need to start making a plan of how I'm going to draw the part. Where am I going to start? What part of it am I gonna draw first? How can I break it down into some Simple parts, simple shapes that I can draw easily. And I just have to think about how I position each of those. All right, so when I look at it, this base, okay, I can see the base here in this front view. There's the base in the side view. And if I look at it from underneath, that's the shape it's going to make. When I think about this, if I draw it from this underside or from the top, and I draw its footprint, that outline of what it makes on the ground, and I also put in these two holes, I can extrude that shape up to make the base. Okay, that's gonna be my step one. Step two, I'm going to draw this upright. I could draw that as a rectangle from this side, or I could draw this as a rectangle from over here somewhere and have it attached to the base and extrude it up or in or whichever way I want to do it. Then if I look at this web, okay, there it is in the front view. It's 10 millimeters wide. Uh, it goes from the back edge all the way into the upright and goes up 40 millimeters. Okay, I can draw that as my third bit. Fourth, I'm going to draw a section here to extrude in to remove this five millimeter void. Then what will I do? I need to put in some big 16 millimeter, millimeter fillets in here. Um, looking at this curve and this curve, that needs to have uh, a, far, it'll be a five millimeter, five millimeter fillet that goes in there and also one that goes along the back of that. Oh, look, there's another one down there. Is this one filleted? No, I see no semicircle there. Definitely not filleted up in here. This is my basic plan. Let's see how that pans out in reality. So I'm just going to minimize that. We need a few sizes. Into Inventor now. Um, we're starting a new project. So I need to invent my new project. Uh, it's 
popped up on the other screen. Here we go. So uh, I'm doing a new project. Um, single user, so we leave that alone. Okay. Give it a name. Now, like all of my drawings, I like to start off with the year that I've drawn it so I can easily go back and find it again in the future. And this is the roller bracket. Uh, o -L -E -R. Roller bracket. Terrific. Uh, and we're going to go next. And then I'll say finish. Do I want to create it? Yes, I really do. And there it is. 19 roller bracket. Big tick next to it. That's the one I'm working on. Okay, drawing parts. Want to draw a new part? Uh, get it from our metric library. That's the one I want to use. And the standard millimeter part. That's going to take a moment to open. When we hop in here, I need to think, all right, which orientation am I drawing it from? Which plane do I want to draw the base on? All right, so let's start drawing, opening up a sketch. Here are my dihedral planes. Which one do I want to draw it from? I want to draw it from down here. Okay, when I turn that round, it's as if I'm looking from the top. I'm up high, looking down on it, and I'm looking at the footprint it leaves on the ground. Uh, unfortunately, when it opens up, it rotates the top around and turns it sideways. So this side here, if I just click on that, that's my front. This is the top. Going there. All right, now, I was going to draw a rectangle, but I'm not quite sure what size. Let's go check in this plan here. Um, width. Does it tell me how wide it is anywhere? There's no direct width measurement. I have to calculate it for myself. It's telling me it's 50 millimetres between the centres of the circles. I know that from the centre of the circle, there is a radius of 12 millimetres on this side. So it's 50 plus 12 on this side, 50 plus another 12 on that side. So 50 plus 24, 74 millimetres wide. Um, what about the depth? I'm not going to see it in that view. I will see it in this one. There it is, 46 millimetres. I'm drawing a rectangle that is, I'm going to start it there, and this is going to be, so width first, 74, and then the depth, uh, 46. Is that right? Having a, yep, 46, all over it like an ant and a jelly bean. Okay, like I said, I'm going to round these corners off. Fillet, how big was that fillet? I believe it was 12. So I'm going to say from this one to this one, put a 12 mil corner on and the same over here. And then there were some holes. Those holes were, uh, their diameter was the same as the radius of the side. So 12 there, enter, and 12 here. Finish that sketch off. Center that up a bit. Now, we're going to take that profile and we're going to extrude it up. When I ask it to do the extrude, it's not going to automatically take anything because it can see three different profiles. It can see that main profile. It can see the profile within that circle and it can see the, circle, the profile within this circle. So I move it into the center of the area that I want to extrude. Click once, and you know what? The standard extrusion is the height I need, 10 millimeters. Hit OK. All right. The upright, the bit that stands on top of this. Having a look in here, um, I want to draw a rectangle that is that wide and from that level there up to the top. And then I'll round it off and put the circle in the center. I know that it's 62 millimeters from the very bottom of my object to the center of the hole and the arc around the top. 62 plus 16. 62 plus 16 is going to be, what, 78? But I need to take off the 10 millimeters from my base. 
that brings us back to 68. All right. How wide is it? Oh, I don't see it there. It's definitely not here. It's not in this one. What else could give it that size? It's going to be tied to the size of this arc at the top. It has a radius of 16. Radius, that's only the halfway. Got to double it, 32. 32 wide, 68 tall. Back to Inventor. Put a sketch on this side. Last option on the right is always create a new sketch. Uh, we're drawing. And you're getting deja vu. There was a big glitch. Okay, that's because I tried doing it one way and it, it just messed up. So let me try this again. Okay, so we're drawing a rectangle, like I said. I'm not quite going to touch this here because I might have had a reason why it played up. I need to draw a rectangle. So what do we say the size was? It needs to be uh, 32 mil wide, tab button to swap to the other dimension for height, uh, 68. Okay, hit enter. There is my rectangle. Zoom all so I can see everything. There we go. Now to tie this onto that, I'm going to use my coincident constraint and say, look, take this center point and attach it to the center point of that line. It's in place now. All right. Fillet. We want a 16 mil fillet on the top of this. That's working much better. It automatically shows me where the center of that is. So I can draw in a little circle here. There's a circle inside there. I think I think it's 12 millimeters as well. All right, I'll double check that in a moment. All right. We're going to finish that sketch and we're going to extrude it. How far do we need to extrude? All right, which profile? That one. Oop, that's going the wrong way. Push it in the other direction. Very good. I believe that it's 14 mil. Okay, let's have a quick look at the plan. Uh, yes, 14 millimeters. And. Oh, What's the size of this hole? Yes, 12 mil. Very good. Next, what are we going to do? This web in here. Um, I might do that in the next clip. So what we'll do instead is we'll push this little recess in. Uh, it's got to go in 5 mil. Back to my drawing. Okay, on this face here, I need to do a new sketch. I'm going to use some of the geometry to build my outline. Okay, so project geometry lets me use some of the shape and lines to develop my new profile, my new sketch. So instead of actually drawing a line over those edges, I can project them through onto my surface. Uh, I'm going to need to do an arc, uh, the center point, thank you. If you follow a circle around for a short time, it will show you then where its center is off of that center to this end point, green dot, and goes underneath that green dot. So that automatically picks up the radius that arc needs to be. And I also need a straight line to run halfway through these. Now this thing was 10 mil tall. I know this line needs to be at the halfway point, five millimeters. I can finish my sketch here uh, and extrude it. And it's automatically going to recognize that as a boundary. Uh, I'm going to make it so that it's removing material and I want it to go in five millimeters. Okay, I want to use that surface there. See, it's automatically picked up those bits for me. Happy days, that bit's done. All right, get that much done and hop into my next video to see how to do that web. Go have some fun. See ya.